Future Stars, we continue with our special series on football in China and see which professional club is doing its part to unearth the next generation of talent. Welcome to an in-depth report here on Sports Scene, where we take a look into the world of China's sports and give you a glimpse into where that world is going. I'm Lionel Donovan, and in this series, I'll take you to some of the most remote, remote places in the most country. prestigious. Right now, we're in the trophy room of the show. And most luxurious football institutions. I'm standing in front of one of the largest and talk to school administrators, government officials, coaches, and young football players themselves to get the untold story of China's youth football. This is Sports Team, and this is before the kickoff. Thanks for sticking with us here on Sports. And we continue with the latest installment of our special series known as Before the Kickoff, where we check in on football development here in China. This day, today, we go to southern China and Guangzhou, and the country's most profitable and successful football club is trying to help to find future stars. Whether it's increasing the amount of football players or developing a strong youth football culture, the main goal in developing youth football here in China is to find more talent. I'm standing in front of one of the largest youth football education institutions in the world, the Evergrande Real Madrid Football School. This school has 50 football fields and takes up 680,000 square meters in Qingyuan, Guangzhou. The school has over 2,600 students, and the administrators are confident that the careers of China's future football stars begin here. Football institutions are popping up all over the country, and in this episode, we talk about how those institutions are teaching China's kids, and what's in store for those kids when the game is over. Our school uses advertisements that are broadcasted on multiple TV stations nationwide to attract kids. They'd watch our ads and want to join our school. Then they could enroll in our local enrollment station. Also, we have our own scouts who keep a close eye on youth matches in China. Once a talented player is spotted, we will reach out and try our best to persuade the parents to send their kids here. Talent scouting is a very complicated topic and might be one of the most important factors in the youth football education system because the only way a player can be successful is if they're very talented and have years of proper training. But if the kids aren't naturally talented and have no potential, then even with the best training available, they'll only become an experienced amateur footballer in the future. So what is the standard used to determine whether a young player is talented or not? And is there really a foolproof way to accurately determine whether or not that young player may have potential in the future? Once the player arrives at our local enrollment center, they need to pass some tests, a physical ability test, a test that determines their skill level, and an academic exam as well. We will then choose a few really talented kids out of those thousands of applicants. In the past, we chose players solely based on their ability to win. So when a kid goes through puberty, if they grow earlier than others, they'd be bigger and stronger and faster than other kids in their age. They'd win a lot of games in their age group. But in the long term, these kids normally have limited potential. What China did in the past was total nonsense. But Ronaldo or Messi, most of the world-class football stars are not very tall to begin with. Finding talent in China is very difficult. We came to China not only to bring the Brazilian way of training, but also to try to bring as much as we can from the Sao Paulo football environment, the concepts of football tactics, and most importantly, the mindset. We try to make Chinese kids understand why you choose football for your future and help you to keep evolving on this path. You know, Ian Rush, who is, is the top goal scorer in history for Liverpool Football Club, he also visited 
uh, China maybe 10 plus years ago, we went to the Beijing Guan under 16 levels. He was very impressed by their physical abilities um, and even by their technical abilities. But he again said after thing, I do not see one brain, one football brain in this team. Um, so something's going wrong. Nowadays, the road to professional football starts earlier than ever. Here, kids as young as nine years old spend half of their waking hours to practicing and studying football, hoping for a shot at the big leagues. Some people say that's too young to start practicing. However, in Brazil, kids as young as 14 years old are not only competing professionally, they're signing contracts. It's a controversial issue in the world of youth football, and clubs and coaches from around the world are struggling to find the perfect age to begin training tomorrow's champions. We need to start with very young kids, start training them when they are in preschool and when they are five or six years old. You have to find a balance with it. You can't, you can't have really young children at sort of five years old coming in and training four, five, six times a week. I mean, these, what we're talking about here is we're talking about professional coaches. In China's contemporary youth football system, the trend is that the age to begin professional training is getting younger and younger. This happened in table tennis before. Kids were being forced to enter into professional sports, training at a very early age which might have helped China's status in the sport rise rapidly. But from the athlete's personal view, it's very unnatural. In Europe, any child under the age of 14 is not allowed uh, to leave school or their normal life for football reasons. Uh, they will play football in their school and in their local amateur football club. It is only at the age of 14 that a child is allowed, I believe it's two afternoons a week, away from school to play football. Tuesday and Thursday afternoon they can leave school. This is at the age of 14. Before the age of 16, no player may be transferred or sign uh, a professional deal. However, the older kids are not very promising. Their skills and mindset are all limited by the traditional Chinese education system. I don't have much hope, but we still have a few kids that are quite good. And they thought it was the case because the training programs and the coaching programs that the Chinese coaches were using were totally unsuitable. Um, and they seemed um, to teach the players to act like robots, uh, to follow a set series of uh, rules and just repeat and repeat and repeat. Whereas at that age and that level, it should be the opposite. Behind me, a class of Evergrande kids are practicing during the holidays. Many of the holidays are like this because the school is so isolated from the city that many of the students can't return home. But that's a sacrifice the students and their families are prepared to make, all in the hopes of becoming China's next professional football stars. But how many of these kids will actually make it to the football professional leagues? And what happens to those kids that don't make the cut? Players who retire from professional teams often end up unemployed. Every year, professional teams get rid of many players. Plus, in clubs, only 3 to 5% of youth team players can make it onto the adult team. The remaining 95% of kids now face unemployment and would have to find other jobs. Certainly Liverpool, again, from my perspective, the clubs ensured that those, because there's a huge number of these players, even though that these, these kids are getting professional football training from five years old, there's still a huge number of these players that don't make it to professional football because it's so competitive. But the clubs try and ensure that those children have got something to fall back on if they don't make it to professional football. Now, quite often, the, the education that they've insisted that these children get becomes useful. So they can go into a sports degree, which is exactly what I did, uh, and then go into coaching. I think this is a revolutionary time for Chinese football. We used to care about gold medals so much, but we should now start to rethink about this. Do we really need them? What do they prove? I think sports should bring out our chance to reflect and give us a positive atmosphere, as well as a strong physical environment. If football can give children these qualities, then they would be willing to choose this sport as a future avenue. The future for those who don't make it to professional football greatness is worrying. But what is life like for those who do make it? And what do they see once they stand on top of the pyramid?
In the next episode, we'll answer this question by taking you into one of the most elite youth training camps in China, the Shandong Lunang Youth Football School, where China's best of the best teenage football players gather, train, and fight for their dreams.